ora, Excite Fano. Check out these new flashlights. This service is going to be lit. I just want to bring to you a bit of a verse out of Psalms 100. And it says, 100 verse 4 and 5, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. The Lord is good, His love endures forever, and His faithfulness continues through all generations. I want you to keep that in mind right now as we get up to our feet, we put down our coffees, and we give our Lord some praise. Come on, church. Come on, let's do some praise and worship. The praise awaken inside of every heart. For He is awesome. Our God is awesome. The ground is shaking as we're singing loud. For He is awesome. Our God is awesome. You are faithful and you're able to do anything. So I trust you, never doubt you, cause you hold it all. Hey, every day of my life I'll praise you. Every moment I'll bless your name. You have given me love unfailing. Praise awaken inside of every heart. For He is awesome, our God is awesome. You are faithful and you're able to do anything. So I trust you, never doubt you. Do 
good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Come on, people of every nation. People from ever. spaces at home, we want to lift your name high in this place because you are the way maker. Through every situation, you make a way for us. For every situation, a way is made for you to be glorified. And right now, Father, that's what we pray for, that you would be glorified in everything we do. So Lord, our way maker, our miracle worker, we just want to worship you in this place. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are here.
Father, we just give you thanks and glory and honor and praise. I want you to, in your space right now, where you're standing, I just want you to lift up, lift up a shout of praise to such a good God in your house. Lift up a shout of praise. Sing out your song straight from your heart in this moment. Let him know that you love him. Let him know you appreciate everything about him. Let him know that you worship him, not because of what he gives you, but because he is worthy of worship. Worthy of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that your goodness and your mercy relentlessly chase us down every single day of our lives, whether we see it or not. You are chasing us down with your goodness. You are chasing us down with your mercy. You are chasing us down with your love. And before us, your angel prepares the way. You are a light to our feet. You are a lantern to our path. You are in us. And we are in you. So, Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord. And we thank you. Lord, I just pray that this service would be blessed that you would bless every single person who sits under your word this morning, Father, that there would be good, good soil for your seed to be sown into. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Are you looking for a way to get connected? We have Life Group Zoom meetings on weekly and we would love to get to know you. Life Groups are an essential way to stay connected, get support and a place to get encouraged. If you'd like to join a Life Group, please visit our website www.excite.org.nz or email us at info at excite.org.nz. We can't wait to hear from you. And also, we want to thank you for your continued support of the church. Because of you, we've been able to bless families and provide food parcels within our community. Please see our details here if you would like to give today. Next up, enjoy an awesome message from Pastor Ruth Whitehead. Good morning, Excite Church. I have the privilege and honour to be able to share the word with you this morning. So we'll just get right into it and we'll just ask the Lord for his help. Father, we just thank you that you are a good God. Thank you that you hear us, that you are with us, that you are for us. We just thank you for your goodness daily, your blessings that are upon us. I thank you for the anointing to preach this word, that it will be a blessing to everyone who hears it. We thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So for the month of April, our theme has been sunrise, and Paul has had... Um, a few F's that he has been um, preaching on. The first one was our father, the second one was our faith, and the third one was our family, and he has asked me to share this morning on our future. So I'm just going to get right into it, and I've got three things that I want to bring to you this morning and read the word. And the first one is a promise for a great future. The second one I want to share on is a praise for a great future. And the third one is a prayer for a great future. So let's get into it. So Genesis 15 verse 4 to 6, it's the story of Abraham. And it says there, Then the word of the Lord came to Abram. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and he said, look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Then in Genesis 22, we read this, and the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven the second time. And he says in verse 17 there, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Abram was called to be a father before he even had a son. God called Abram to be a father when he didn't have a child. I am going to make you a father of many nations. You would think that if God was going to use someone, he would use someone that was easier to work with than Abraham. What do I mean by that? Well, the first thing, Abraham's wife was barren because the Bible tells us so. And the second thing was, it tells us that she was so too old. So she had already gone through the change. And the third thing that the Bible tells us in the book of Romans was that Abram was impotent. So that it seemed that the word was impossible to perform. Isn't it amazing how God will even wait when everyone else gives up? God waits when everyone else has given up of the promise and of the future. God waits. And God waited till Abraham had three strikes against him. The odds didn't look good for Abraham, even having a son. If it was us, we would say three strikes, you're out, Abraham. But God says three strikes, you're in. When it seems that it's so impossible for Abraham to ever receive his promised son, God says, now I'm going to bless you. Not only was he going to be a father, but a father of nations. And through your seed, God told him, shall all the nations of the earth become blessed. Can you imagine 
what Sarah must have went through as she was waiting for that future to come into being. Can you imagine Sarah calling, because the name Abram means father of many nations, Abraham. Can you imagine this, that she's calling every day, father of many nations, come for breakfast. And each, as each week goes by, father of many nations, you need to come for dinner. And as the years started to roll by, father of many nations, how about we watch Netflix? <laughs> That's a joke. Can you imagine what it must have felt like as each day rolled past, each week went past, each year went past. She was getting older and older, still calling him father of many nations, and she had still not seen her promise. But Abraham believed God. Do you believe God for your miracle even when you haven't seen it? Now, Abraham wasn't perfect. The Bible tells us that he lied. He'd made some mistakes, but what God told Abraham, Abraham believed. He was a mighty man of faith. And your faith is tried in order for you to grow. Our faith cannot be tried in the comforts of life. Our faith is tried when there is discomfort, when there is hardship, when there is adversity and problems. That is a breeding ground for faith to be born in our spirit. When it seems that all hell is broken loose and your future doesn't look that great and when you have nothing left but your faith, that's when God points to you and says, that's my friend. Imagine God saying to one of his angels, go tell my friend Abram, he's going to have a son. If that was me, I'd be like, mm, are you sure you got that right? He's a bit old. And his wife's really old. Are you sure that that's correct? They're going to have a son? But Abraham believed God. Are you believing God today for a great future? Are you believing God for mighty miracles? You know, we were, um, at one of the starts of the year, we get a whole team together and we pray with the whole team. There was about 12 of us there. And that evening, God said to me, go tell these people in this group, that they're gonna have a child, they're gonna have a baby. Now that's a really big thing to actually come to someone and say, hey, you're gonna have a baby, especially when they haven't had one for a while. And I'm having this internal debate and kind of argument with God saying, oh, what if, what if, you know? And he said, just do it. So I got the, said to, went to the couple and I said to them, hey, I just believe God has told me this, that you're gonna have a baby. And they started to cry because they had been waiting for seven years to have a child. Two months later, she was pregnant. When the God tells you something, you believe it. So God wants to bless you this 2020. No matter what is going on, no matter what strikes you have against you, God wants to bless you. During this time of COVID lockdown, we can definitely say that it has been challenging. There has been pressures on people, not only in New Zealand, but around the world. Medical staff working hard, working in hard, contagious conditions. But one thing we can say as the people of God, we know that we know that we know God is faithful. And that no matter, we can believe God's word. He has a great future for us. We can trust him. What if you dared to believe God for a great future? 2020. What do you see, Ruth? What do you see, church? What do you see? Look up to the stars and remind yourself of the promises that God gave to Abraham. I'm going to bless you like the stars in the sky. More, more and more. And because we are the seed of Abraham, we are a blessed people. Call out greatness in your future. Call out greatness in future generations. I want my children and my children's children to go beyond and do far greater than I have ever done. Jesus wanted that as well for his children, for his followers. In John 14, it tells us this. I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. So the second point I want to bring to you today is a praise for a great future. 
And in Revelation 5 and 5, it tells us there that one of the elders is before the throne. And he says, stop weeping to the Apostle John for all that the Apostle John had seen. And what was going on? He says, stop weeping. The lion of the tribe of Judah, which means praise. So the lion of the tribe of praise has triumphed. When we praise, chains are broken. Walls come down. You know, when Paul and Silas were in lockdown, they were literally in lockdown, in prison, chained with a gad supervision. It says they kept singing despite their imprisonment. You don't have to be the perfect altogether, never lose it at your kids to roar. It's time for the church to start roaring again with the praise of Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lion of the tribe of praise has triumphed. It's time for us to roar again with the praise throughout New Zealand and throughout the world. I was watching a nature program on TV one day and um, there was this pack of lions and one of the older lions in this pack, um, he would got isolated from the others. He was slower. He's a bit more feeble. And the hyenas had noticed this and they were coming in to attack him and get him isolated so that they could get him down and have him for dinner, basically. And this old lion, um, they, as soon as he was isolated, the hyenas jumped on him and he got knocked down and he was wounded. But he did something that was so amazing, that um, was just amazing when I was watching this program. He gave this almighty roar and the hyenas scattered. Do you know our enemies run when we start to roar with praise, when we get up in the morning and say, thank you Jesus, I am up. I'm going to have an amazing day because you have a bright future for me. And I want to share about a woman in the garden, Eve. The devil came to her and God had already blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. But sin came in there and there has been a weeping ever since till there was another garden. And this time there is another woman and there is a man who comes to her and it's Jesus. He's risen from the dead. It was Resurrection Sunday. And this woman, she is there and she's weeping. And the first words that Jesus ever says after the resurrection was this. Why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? Our world is weeping from all the pain and the torment of the death and the horrors that we are facing right now and have faced over the years and the centuries. Our world is weeping and Jesus is saying, why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? Our world need Jesus. They just don't know it. So church, let's get our praise on. Let's roar our praises as we worship our Father and just declare out a great future. And so here we see God was calling to Abraham and he was saying, get ready. I am about to bring a change in your life. Have you ever had God disrupt your life? And through the interruptions of life, God will bring a question or a question mark. Who are you actually seeking? Who are you seeking during this lockdown and COVID? Are you worried, looking around, fearful? Or are you seeking the Lord through this time, giving praise to him for his goodness and his faithfulness? Are you believing his word and his promises today for a great future? So the woman Mary, after resurrection and in the garden there, she didn't recognize him, but he said, Mary. It wasn't until he called her by name that she turned around and she recognized him. Do you know Jesus knows your name? He knows everything that you are going through. He knows all the hardships that you've been feeling. He sees you weeping and he says to you your name and he says, come follow me. All will be well. You know, the conqueror Jesus, the risen, glorious, blessed creator of the world, the giver of life, 
the CEO of the universe, the healer of sicknesses and diseases. Are you expecting to see Jesus, the risen, glorious, one who conquered over death, hell and the grave? Are you expecting to see Jesus in all his glory moving through our nation and through this world at the time? Mary there wasn't expecting to see Jesus risen. She wasn't expecting it, but Jesus was expecting her. Jesus is expecting to see you this morning. He wants to see you. He wants to hear you. He's calling your name and he's saying, rise up. The lion of the tribe of praise has triumphed. Get your roar back on, church. Get your roar of praise on this morning. Do not be fearful. Be at peace. The Lion of the tribe of Judah has triumphed. What a great, bright future we have. Call it forth like God called Abram. While he was still childless, God called him father of many nations. Call a great future out. You know, Abram was called out of his country. He was called from his father, his family, and everything that was familiar to him. And he was called to go somewhere else in the future. You know, sometimes we have to get out of our comfort zone. Abram had to get out of everything that was comfy and familiar and he had to go walking. He had to walk and step into his future. That's what Jesus has for us. He says, keep going. Don't get comfy where you are. Don't get stuck where you are. Keep walking because I have a great future ahead of you. If Abram had stayed where he was and never obeyed the call of God on his life, who knows where he would have been today. He might never have received the promise of his son, Isaac. And think of the promise of the stars. Your seed are going to be blessed like the stars in the sky. Abraham had to leave everything that was familiar and comfy. And you know, even though he couldn't see it on the outside, he saw it on the inside. I want to encourage you, church, that you might see it on the inside, Keep walking till you see it on the outside. Keep walking. Keep going forward. Keep walking into your future. And you know, we, whatever season of life we're going through, and at the moment it's been like a bit of a winter season where there's so much happening, so much adversity. The faithfulness in the winter is critical for the fruitfulness of the summer. Have you faith in the winter season to expect the harvest in the summer season? I can tell you God has a great harvest in the future for us and for you. And just like the sons of Issachar in 1 Chronicles 12 and 32, from the tribe of Issachar there were 200 men, leaders of the tribe with their relatives, all these men, understood the signs of the times and knew the best course for Israel to take. May you understand the best course for your family to take during this season. May we as leaders know the best course for Excite Church to take, to move forward and understand the times and see great days ahead. Step into your future like Abraham did. God has a great future for you. And you know what the enemy means for harm by bringing this coronavirus on the world, Jesus says, don't weep, church. The lion of the tribe of praise of Judah has triumphed. Joseph had to tell his brothers that when his brother sold him into Egypt, when he was wrongfully accused of something that he never did and he was sent to prison for about 14 years after it all had finished and he was then the prime minister pretty much of Egypt, his brothers came to him and Joseph said, Don't be afraid. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. What was intended for harm, God will work for his good church, for the saving of many souls. Do not be afraid. Do not weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah has triumphed. Get your roar back on. You know, when David faced the Goliath, the big giant, the army of, of um, Goliath and everyone there did not believe that this young boy could take the Goliath giant out. And even the army of Israel didn't even believe it either. 
And this is what David said to the giant. He said this, And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. The whole world will know, church, that the Lord is on the throne. The lion of the tribe of praise has triumphed. And my last point is this, a prayer for a great future. In Jeremiah, we are given the account of people of Jerusalem who've been taken into exile by King Nebuchadnezzar to Babylon. Now, God didn't tell them to give up in the midst of such a dark season of Israel's life. This is what God said in Jeremiah 29 verse 5. He says this, Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. And that famous verse we quote a, lot, quote a lot in verse 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Church, God's people too often pray like a widow when it can pray like a bride. Do you know Elijah prayed for no rain and it happened. Daniel prayed as well. As was his usual habit, the Bible tells us, three times a day, even when there was a death sentence over us, over him, sorry, he opened the window for the whole world to see and he prayed. Can you imagine, I prayed for sunshine and I get it. Can you imagine if Paul prayed for big honey sales and it happened? What if you prayed for your whole family to come to know Jesus and it comes to pass? What if Reuben prayed for the funds to take um, Harmony on an amazing Fiji holiday and it came to pass? What if we prayed for a great move of God to come through New Zealand that hundreds and thousands will come to Jesus and it came to pass? We are asked to pray for our nation, to pray for our government, to pray for those in power who have authority over us, Pray for our nation. Pray for a bright future. Call forth the promises. Call forth praise. Start to praise. Start to pray in a great way for a great future is available for us. You order your future by what you speak. May this word be a blessing to you this morning. I'm just going to hand over to Reuben. Thank you. What an awesome message from Pastor Ruth. I want to tell you, family, that there is a hope and a future for you that is found in Christ Jesus. And if this message or any part of it resonated with you this morning, if you can feel the Lord knocking on the door of your heart and you have never received Him as your Lord and Savior, then friend, I don't want to miss this chance, this moment, to give you that opportunity. In Romans 10 verse 9, it talks about we just need to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that, that God raised him from the dead and will be saved. So I want to give you this chance. It's just a simple prayer that you would pray along with me and I'd be honored to do that with you. So friend, if that's you, please just follow me in this prayer. Dear Jesus, I thank you for what you did for me at the cross. I believe that you are Lord. And I believe that God raised you from the dead. And right now, I turn from my old self and I turn into a new life with you. I receive your righteousness, I receive God's forgiveness. And I thank you for a new life. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Fano. And if that is you, if you responded right now to this prayer, I would love to encourage you to pick up your phone right now and text YES to the number that's being shown on the screen. Because we just want to get to know you, we want to welcome you to your new family, and we want to encourage you on this walk, on this new start with your life. This is so important. So please, if that was you, pick up your phone now and text YES to this number. God bless, Fano. Have an awesome week, and we'll see you next Sunday.